first thing you have to understand about wind turbines in Energy Plus is that there's no physical manifestation of a wind turbine. So when you look at your IDF file and visualize it, you can see the photovoltaics, you can see the zone, you can see the shading devices, etc. There are no physical geometries related to wind turbines. However, we can model it using a object in the uh, file. So let me show you how to do that. Now when you do this, you have to use your own common sense about where the wind tur turbines are located and if they have access to wind. Uh, again, there's no physical manifestation of this in the program, so it doesn't know where your wind turbine is located. It assumes that the wind turbine has access to wind and that um, there's no large obstructions like buildings or trees or things like that. So this is why I want you to lay out wind turbines on a site plan. You can do a check for yourself to see whether it would have access to wind. And a rule of thumb is that the wind turbine should be separated by three times the uh, windswept area of the turbine. And I'll go over what windswept area is in class. It's going to be easier to do on the board. But in the meantime, I want to show you where in the IDF file the um, object is located. So right here are all the photovoltaic panels. Right below that is this generator wind turbine. And I've modeled two wind turbines here. So there's the wind turbine endurance and wind turbine wind spire. The endurance is a horizontal axis turbine. It's quite large. It's um, six and a half meters in diameter and it's 30 meters tall. So real large. It's a sort of a farm grade a wind turbine. The wind spire is a vertical axis wind turbine and it is much smaller and more suited to sort of urban situations or suburban situations where you've got a street or you've got neighbors or a lot of obstructions or even a smaller plot of land. Um, neither of these two are really intended to be mounted on a building but I'd say that if uh, aesthetically that's something that is possible, you know, you, you can imagine with, this, with your building, then go ahead and try it. Alternatively, I'd also like to ex sort of extend this opportunity for you to um, think of your site relative to the overall city and surroundings around you. So if the streets, um, maybe it would be beneficial to have wind turbines on the streets or in a neighboring uh, neighbor's yard or in a uh, offshore in, uh, on the, the ocean, that's fine too. But remember, I want you to include that on your site plan. This, so this one I said before has a ro rotor diameter of 6.3 meters. That means that they would, the, the uh, wind turbines would have to be three times that apart, so approximately 20 meters apart. The wind spire has a diameter, effective diameter of 1.2 meters, so they would have to be about 3.6 meters apart. Apart from that, there's not a whole lot for you to think about with these. Um, you can go through all the different uh, inputs here, and um, I've, I've sort of pre-input these, so there's not a lot for you to do. I'll explain in class how I came up with these numbers, where, where to get them, so you understand them a little better. Um, the only thing that, that uh, you might want to consider changing is, is this, the annual local average wind speed and the height for the local average wind speed. So these two help Energy Plus to derive a more accurate understanding of wind speed throughout the year. And it uses this as a coefficient to the climate data that it's reading. So it takes the wind speed from the climate data and then uh, modifies that based on both the annual local average wind speed and the height for the local wind speed. Other than that, these are good to go. And so this runs along with your um, input file, and you probably don't know this, but you've been running these the entire semester so far. So if you go to your dashboard um, and you go to the renewables tab here, you'll see that there's the endurance and the wind spire, and I've got for now just one of each of them so you can see the difference in performance. The, in, in Oakland, where this is run, the, wind, the endurance is roughly four times more energy than the wind spire is. Um, but keep in mind, the endurance is a much, much larger wind turbine. 
And if you go down here to this graph, you can see the, uh, the difference. So the endurance is the light blue and the wind spire is the dark blue um, and the, the power throughout the year. Um, and it's interesting to compare these, the, the photovoltaics to these. So you see at peak performance, the, this um, panel that I modeled here, this horizontal, is uh, getting just about the same power as the very large wind turbine and about five times more power than the wind spire is. On the other hand, these uh, wind turbines are operating throughout the year and during the nighttime, whereas the um, PVs are, have a, a dramatic drop off in the winter time. And of course, when there's no, uh, when there's no sun available, both on cloudy days and at night, they're not generating energy. So theoretically, at least, wind turbines and photovoltaic panels can be a nice complement to each other because you get more wind at night, generally speaking, and, um, and so they're more effective at night. If we go to the energy end use panel, like we did before, again, you can adjust how many you want to include in your suite. So say I want uh, one endurance and 10 wind spires. Um, I'm going to be generating four times, three, three and a half times more energy with my wind spires now than with my endurance. And it's going to add these to the graph as the light green. So now I'm generating a whole lot more energy uh, with um, my wind turbines than I am with my photovoltaics. And you can see that these graphs are different scales. So this is minus 300. This is plus 14,000. Um, and it is a, a lot more energy that I'm generating. And throughout the year, you can see I'm generating about four times more energy than I'm using. Now, uh, to make this, to think about this purely as a zero energy building or zero net energy building, one that will just generate as much as it uses, I'm going to say zero out the endurance and just have one wind spire and see we're now very close. So we're consuming, actually, if you look here, we're consuming 66 uh, kilowatt hours more energy than we're producing. Uh, so it's just barely not zero energy, uh, but you can see here the overall uh, profile. So if I want to just kick this over the top, I might have two wind spires. I'm now actually producing a whole lot more than I'm using. Play around with it. There's a balance somewhere uh, which is going to get you closer to zero net energy without going over. It's a little bit like the price is right in most jurisdictions where um, you don't want to uh, where the utility won't keep paying you for extra generation. Um, and it's interesting to think about the case of, say, a campus like Berkeley has, where you might be able to generate more at Worcester Hall and give that energy to the building next door, uh, like the music building, and uh, and you wouldn't you'd be able to sort of sell it within the campus rather than back to the grid.